So fermentation is a way of making ATP when there is no oxygen present. As we said, we need ATP to help with oxidative phosphorylation, but there's times when oxygen isn't available, and so you have to turn to some other way to generate energy. There are two steps to fermentation. The first step is glycolysis, just like we did before. We're going to start with glucose. We're going to create two net ATPs and some NADHs. But that's all we're going to create. We're not going to create any additional energy carriers through Krebs cycle, and we're not going to create additional ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. Instead, we're going to go to a series of additional reactions, and they vary from organism to organism. This second set of chemical reactions are just intended to unload the taxi cab so that we have empty cabs to go back to work in glycolysis. These additional reactions create all kinds of different byproducts, and these byproducts are things we are familiar with and benefit from. Before I get to those byproducts, consider whether this is more or less efficient than aerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic cellular respiration is going to generate 36 to 30 ATPs per glucose. Fermentation with no oxygen is only going to create 2 ATPs per oxygen. So it's actually much less efficient than aerobic cellular respiration. But it's better than dying if there's no oxygen present. So let's look at some of those important byproducts and who actually does this process. The organisms that do this are going to be different kinds of bacteria, fungi, and even in our own uh, human muscles we sometimes do fermentation when our muscles are stressed to the point that they don't have enough oxygen. What is the purpose of fermentation? Remember the whole point is to make ATP. There's byproducts that are interesting to us down here and that we care very much about, but those are just byproducts. The point of fermentation is for this bacteria or uh, fungi to make the ATP it needs to survive, grow, and reproduce. So remember that fermentation has two steps. The first step, glucose into pyruvate, or in this case pyruvic acid, that generates ATP and NADH, and then it has a second series of steps that are meant to regenerate our NAD plus so that it will be present back here for glycolysis again. What's interesting to humans is the byproducts of this second step. So it creates different organic molecules, and here is a list of some of the different organic molecules that it produces. If we look at this particular bacteria, when it does fermentation, it's going to create CO2 and propionic acid. So we've given it lactose, a, a milk sugar to feed on. It's going to use that to make its ATP, and it's going to curdle the milk with the acid, and it's also going to create carbon dioxide bubbles, and we end up with Swiss cheese. Other kinds of bacteria will create lactic acid. If you look at a container of yogurt, you'll see on the side that it says it has active live bacteria in it, usually lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is going to take milk, and with its lactic acid, it's going to change the milk into a more solid form and give it a little bit of an acid taste. Now, a lot of yogurts you have are sweet, and that's because they've added fruit or different flavorings in there. This is, again, just an organism making ATP, but it's changing its sugar molecules into a lactic acid, which is giving us specific flavors. This is one of this biologist's favorite kind of fermentation. This is yeast. This is a fungus that is happily doing fermentation, and the byproducts of its second step are carbon dioxide and ethanol, or a form of alcohol. This is how we make wine and beer. With wine, you're giving the yeast some grapes as the sugar. With beer, you're giving the yeast malt. Different kinds of yeasts will provide different flavors of these different molecules, uh, and you'll have different amounts of bubbles, etc. 
We, of course, also use yeast for bread. So what you're doing there is you're taking a pinch of sugar and you're feeding it to your yeast. The yeast is growing inside the bread dough. And as it grows, it's producing ethanol and CO2. For bread, we don't care so much about the ethanol. Any of that that's produced will evaporate when the bread is cooked. But the CO2 bubbles are what cause the bread to rise. And so all the little holes you have in your bread come from this fermentation process. And here are examples of some other byproducts that are produced from the process of fermentation. So clearly fermentation has significant benefits to humans. Although we're really just benefiting from the byproducts, fermentation itself is making ATP for living things. I did mention that our bodies sometimes do fermentation. Uh, when you start working out really hard or running really fast and you get that burn in your muscles, what's happening is your cells aren't getting enough oxygen and they're switching over to fermentation to at least make a teeny bit of ATP to try and get you through whatever it is you're doing at that very moment. The burn is the fact that you're actually producing an acid. That acid breaks down pretty quickly and the burn goes away. If you think about someone who's in really good shape, they don't get that muscle burn. What we mean by being in really good shape is really that you are very good at getting oxygen to your cells. So you have a very healthy, efficient circulatory system. You have lots of blood vessels getting to every single cell and that only develops if you need it. So it only develops if you exercise a lot and you get better and better at delivering oxygen to your cells. Your cells get better and better at making ATP and you are in better and better shape.